Palmetto State Armory released their Sabre line of rifles here a little while ago, and I, for one, am really happy to see these things on the market. We all know that PSA is known for their budget-friendly guns and parts kits, but the Sabre line, it's just a little bit different. The Sabre can be looked at as more of a premium offering, and you can buy it as either a completed rifle or a parts kit. That's what I opted for, parts kit. I like the completed Sabre rifles that PSA makes, but I wanted to have a little bit more choice over some of the options, and that's why I went with the kit. I started this build with a lower from Aero Precision. Now, of course, they are local to me, about an hour and a half drive away, but they make some really good stuff. I like to support the home team as much as humanly possible. For my grip and stock, obviously Magpul. I like the look and I like the feel. This rifle is going to see fairly heavy use. I imagine several thousand rounds a year I'll probably be putting through this. It's going to be my go-to gun for everything from, you know, general range time to product testing. And if by some chance the world does come crashing down around us, it's probably going to be the rifle that I end up grabbing. That being said, if I have a rifle that's going to be getting that level of usage, Magpul is the only way to go when it comes to things like pistol grips and buttstocks. Anyway, so for my trigger, I went with a flat-faced drop-in single-stage trigger from Palmetto State Armory. You guys may have seen the video that I did on that before. I really feel like for the money, it's hard to beat that trigger. It's good quality, it's smooth, it functions well, it's reliable. Not only that, but it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Again, as I test products for the AR-15 platform, this is the gun that I'll be testing them on. So who knows, I may pull that trigger out as I'm testing a different trigger later on, um, but for the initial build, that's what I'm going with. Most of the other parts that I selected for this build are going to be from Strike Industries. Accenting the Sabre with Strike Industries parts, I feel like, is a perfect match. I mean, look at this gun. Alright, let's start in the back. We'll work our way forward. The Strike Industries buffer tube is pretty cool. It's scalloped. We're just going to reduce a little bit of weight, but it's also going to help, you know, sometimes you have a buttstock that is, I don't know, a little tighter than what you would want. They don't move freely. Um, that also helps with that. And if I'm being completely honest, uh, that buffer tube looks pretty cool. Most rifles that are out there, they just use a, you know, basic uh, mil spec buffer tube. Is an upgrade on the buffer tube really necessary? Probably not. But I really wanted to upgrade as much stuff on this gun as I possibly could. When you stack up, you know, 15 or 20 different ARs against a wall, you're going to find there's a lot of parts that are all going to be the same on them, and the buffer tube's one of those. The end plate and castle nut, uh, that, that part was a must have for me. Uh, I was scrolling through the Strike Industries site and I saw that and I thought, you know what, that thing's cool, I've gotta have it. The thing that really caught my eye about it is that it has three built-in QD mounts. It's got one on each side and then it's got one down on the bottom that kind of angles backwards. Over the last few years, I've tried a handful of different options for you know, mounting a QD mount back there in that area, and nothing was really like solid or hung just the right way. Um, it's always frustrating, but this setup from Strike Industries works really well. Not only that, but you know what? Honestly, I think this is one of the better looking um, end plate and castle nut setups that's out there. Another thing that everybody always does when it comes to an AR build is they just use standard mil spec takedown pins. That's fine. I'm not like bagging on that at all. But I, again, I wanted to do something different. I chose the shift pins from Strike Industries. Those are nice because it's a toolless design. They're a little bit different than what you're used to. Not only do they look a lot better than your standard pins, but they're innovative. Now I've installed enough takedown pins over the last God knows how many years that it's not a huge deal. I very rarely will lose a detent or a spring anymore. Recently, somebody had told me about these things, so I really wanted to get them and try them out and see how they worked. And I figured, what better project to put them on than the Sabre build? Now these pins, they have a channel cut out along them that is different than what you're used to. It makes it super easy to get those installed and uninstalled. I'm not gonna do the process here on the channel, but Strike Industries does have all the information over there on their website for it. When you look over the directions, it looks super complicated until you really get into it and you start putting it together. And then you're going to be like, oh, okay, this is no big deal. Another cool addition to this build is the Cobra Billet Aluminum Trigger Guard. Now, it looks kind of weird. 
but I really like it. It has this uh, ledge on the side that you can use as an index point for your finger. I honestly thought that it was gonna be weird at first, but it, it actually works out pretty well. Take it to the range a couple of times and it's nice kind of having that shelf for your finger built into it. Again, visually, this trigger guard looks really good. And I know yeah, that's not all that matters, but I'm trying to make a rifle that looks good as well as functions well. I didn't really want to put any of the same old type of stuff on this gun. The enhanced bolt catch. Now, that's not something that's like super fancy or revolutionary. Although, once you use it a few times, you're probably not going to want to go back to that same mill spec uh, bolt catch that you've been using all this time. The Strike Industries bolt catch, it sticks out a little bit further than what you're used to, and it's got a different texture. Um, it's easy to find, it's easy to grip, I really like it. Something that I've really wanted to try out for quite some time now is the Ambi Mag Release by Strike Industries. Um, I am right-handed, I'm not left-handed, um, but I do have some friends that are lefties. Not only that, but I like to have the option to be able to manipulate that mag release from the opposite side if something happens and it's absolutely necessary. The other thing that I really like about this mag release is the right side, the standard side. Um, it's a different shape, kind of texture thing. It's like divoted in. Um, it feels really good and it's easy to index, I guess. It just feels more ergonomic than what most of us are using on our ARs, and I really do like the way that it functions. Next, we have the Strike Industries Switch. This Ambi Safety looks great. Honestly, you know I've worked on these guns a lot over the years, and this was one of the biggest pain in the asses to install that I've ever encountered. It was frustrating, and I don't know why, but I assumed you know, the larger paddle would have went to the rear and the smaller one would have went to the front, but it doesn't work that way. I'm not gonna put a number on it. I'm not gonna tell you how many times that I put this together and took it apart before I finally got it to go together the right way. I will say it was a lot though. I think that was a me thing. Uh, me expecting it to function the opposite way of the way that it was designed to function. That was the problem. It's just different than everything else that's out there. So use it a little bit and it'll become second nature. Another Strike Industries item that I put on here is this hand stop here. Now, because of the current BS that's going on um, with the pistol braces, I have disassembled my Jackal for now. I pulled the hand stop off and I decided I might as well go ahead and put it on this gun since it's already chocked full of other Strike Industries components. I'm normally not really a fan of hand stops, but I really like this one from Strike Industries. It is low profile, the texture gives you a great grip, and it has multiple areas where if you were going to need to brace this off of something, it's got a little texture here in the front, so you could, in theory, uh, press that up against something to get a good grip, uh, to get a good solid firing platform if need be. The hand stop itself is lightweight, it's strong. What else can I say? I like it. Now the Sabre handguard itself does come with a built-in QD mount, but while I was on the Strike Industries site, I did see uh, this Strike Industries QD mount uh, it lays backwards, which I thought was pretty cool. It's a great idea. I mean, it lays backwards, so instead of having uh, your hardware sticking straight off the side of your gun, it's going to lay backwards, which should kind of make everything a bit more streamlined. I think the QD mount works pretty well, and one of the things that I really like about it is that I can move it wherever I want it on that handguard instead of it being in a fixed position. Okay, so we're almost done with the Strike Industries end uh, of this build. Real close. One thing that really bothered me about the Sabre upper is that it is supposed to be their like higher end or more uh, upgraded build, right? But then they go ahead and they use the same janky ass dust cover and forward assist that everybody else uses. You know the one. The finish is all beat up and it doesn't match anything else on your build. There's nothing special about them at all. So yeah, those both had to go. I swapped out to the Billet Aluminum Ultimate Dust Cover from Strike Industries. Not only does this thing look great, 
but it's super easy to install. The Ultimate Dust Cover, it comes in a billet aluminum as well as a polymer if you want to save a couple of bucks. Honestly, I feel like the aluminum is worth spending a couple extra bucks for. And of course, the other thing is their uh, forward assist. Now, do we really need a forward assist on an AR? I don't know. There's a little bit of back and forth argument on that topic these days. I'm not going to get into that one, but I am going to say that, you know, changing the dust cover and the forward assist really set off the look of this build. And it's a shame that PSA didn't do something a little bit better with it in the first place. I guess at the same time, I'm really not surprised because no matter what AR that I see, whether it is a low end budget build or a high end uh, name brand, they all use the same stuff when it comes to those two parts, uh, the dust cover and the forward assist. Okay, so that's the lower receiver as well as all the Strike Industries components that I put onto my Sabre build. I'm gonna break this video into two pieces because otherwise it is gonna be way too long. So that's gonna be it today. We'll move on to the upper receiver and the, I don't know, general review here in the next video. Thanks for watching you guys. We'll see you back here real soon.